Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Evidence and in today's video, I am going to show you how to build a ridge classifier model. So you might have heard of a ridge regression model, but not a ridge classification model. So how does a ridge classifier model works? Well, from scikit-learn, right? It says um, that the ridge classifier is kind of like a declassification side of uh, the classification variation of the ridge regression model and it works by converting the target values into negative one and one and then treats the problem as a regression task so and then it took if it's a multi-classification problem like i'm about to do right now it will um work as a multi-output or multi-output regression problem. So basically the risk classifier works by converting the classification target into these values and then treating them as a regression task. So that's a brief overview of how the risk classifier works. And in a different video, I go over risk class risk regression. So go ahead and make Make sure you watch that video to get the full story on ridge regression and how it works. So with that being said, let's go ahead and begin. And whenever you're working with a ridge classifier model, it's always good to make sure you scale your data before you run it through the model. All right. So before I started this video, I went ahead and cleaned my data and split it into training and test data set. In a different video, I show you how to split your data into training and test data set. So make sure you go ahead and watch that video. And this is um, the our data frame, our X data frame, and this data set is trying to predict one quality and the Y quality is our target future. And let me just show you a preview of, like, let's say the first five. So this is a preview of, like, the first five rows in our tra Y train data set. So this data frames is trying to predict the wine quality. So now that we've gotten a preview of the data, let's go ahead and import what we need from sklearn.linear model. So ridge regression is a linear model import rich classifier and you can also do rich classifier cv which stands for rich classifier cross validation so basically yeah we'll be doing a cross validation while um doing your rich classification at the same time and then we are also going to need to scale our data so now that we have done that, let's go ahead and instantiate our scalar. All right, so after instantiating our scalar, let's go ahead and um, scale our test and train data. So let's call it S train S is equal to scalar dot fit transform. We want to S transform our training data frame and then s test s is equal to scalar dot transform and basically the scaling process is like multi, um, subtracting the mean of each column from each individual value in that column that's kind of what scaling does so that um, the mean of that column is zero quickly i'm going to show you the documentation for standard scalar just so you can get a good idea of what's going on also, basically, the standard scalar is done by subtracting each value from the mean of that particular column and then dividing it by the standard deviation. That's how um, scikit-learn does the, um, the scaling. And then if you go here, you see it has a fit method, it has a transform method, and then it has a fit transform method. So normally, if you're working... With standard scalar first, you fit the training data set, then you transform the training data set. But if you can do both at the same time, um, using phase transform, 
And also, when you're working with your test data, you're supposed to just do transform. So if we go back here, as you can see right here, I did fish transform on our training data. But when it came to our test data, I did transform. And basically, I've already fit this scalar to our training data. I just want to perform the same transformation I did on the training data and the test data. So um, we can go ahead and get a preview of what this looks like. It's no longer a data frame at this point. It's kind of like an array after the scaling process, but that's kind of what it looks like. So after scaling our data, the next thing we are going to do is instantiate our ridge classifier model. So we are going to call it RGC equal to ridge classifier. And um, we are going to say alpha equal to 10 just to start. And then we are going to say the random state is equal to 42. So what exactly is alpha? Alpha is the regularization strength. And alpha is the regularization strength and it has to be positive and basically regularization improves the conditioning of the problem and reduces the variance of the estimate. Whenever you're doing a ridge regression problem, you are supposed to provide um, an alpha value and the alpha value determines um, the level of penalty that will be applied um, on the model. So this is the ridge classifier documentation. And if you scroll down here, you see that it has um, a fit method, it has a predict method, and it also has a scoring method. So if you see me doing dot fit dot predict and the score, this is where it's coming from. So now that uh, we do this, we start with an alpha of 10, and then I'm gonna show you how to experiment with different alphas to kind of see what the result is gonna be. So now let's go ahead and um, fit the ridge classifier model. So we just do rgc.fit and we want to fit it on our scaled data frame. All right, so we have um, fit this ridge classifier model on our training data frame. Now let's go ahead and use it to make a prediction. Let's go ahead and store it in a variable. So we want to predict using our scaled data frame also. So now we have um, fit our model. We, we have um, used our model to do prediction. How do we actually evaluate the goodness of our model? How do we know if our model's performance is good or not good, right? So that's where um, measurement metrics comes in. For classification problems, you use classification metrics. And for regression problems, you use regression metrics. And in a different vid video, I go over um, classification metrics and regression metrics, you know, and things like that. But... um. For this particular classification problem, we are going to use accuracy score. Accuracy score is one of the most popular ways to evaluate a classification model like this one. And I'm going to show you two ways to calculate the accuracy score. Okay, if we go back to a, this ridge classifier, you can see that it has a scoring method. This scoring method gives you the accuracy. All right. So once we are back here, let me go ahead and get the accuracy using the ridge built-in score. So rgc.score. And you have to provide your test and then your... Alright, so the accuracy score in this case is 52%. So this is one way to get the accuracy score. And now um, let's get to the accuracy score using another method. So you can do from sqlearn.metrics import accuracy score. Now if we do accuracy score and now we provide um, the true value and the true value in this case is our y test and then the predicted value is this one. It will give us the exact same result. All right. 
So this is like giving you the exact same information, but I just wanted to show you like two different ways of doing the exact same thing. So RGC dot score, what you provide here is your S test and then your Y test to get the score. But if you're using the accuracy score method from metrics, you provide um, the Y test and then the predicted Y values and you get the exact same score. So now that we have gotten the score, how do you actually know if this is a good score or a bad score? Well, one way to do that is to compare it to your baseline model and also compare it to the score that you got from other models. So in a different video, I show you how to build a baseline model to get a baseline score that so you can have something to compare your model's accuracy score to. So I went ahead and got the accuracy scores from the other models that I've built. So as you can see right here, my baseline accuracy score was 45% and we got a um, 52% accuracy score from the risk classifier model. And the decision tree classifier gave us accuracy score of 59% and the random forest classifier gave us accuracy score of 66%. So based on what you can see right here, you can see that the rich classifier model is performing better than the baseline accuracy score, but it is worse. This rich classifier model that we built is worse than the decision tree classifier model and it's worse than the random forest classifier model. So basically, we scaled our data and then we fit our model and then we use our model to do a prediction and we got the accuracy score. But what if you want to try different alphas, right? What if you want to try different regularization strength? So in this next part of this video, I'll just show you how to experiment with different regularization method at once. So basically the code here is very identical to the code I just wrote, so I don't see any reason in writing it. So basically this is us experimenting with different alphas and we are gonna do like for regularization and four. So we are gonna try out four, a um, hundred, uh, I mean a thousand, um, 10,000, a hundred thousand, one million um, for regularization strength. And we are gonna instantiate the scalar like I just showed you, we are gonna, uh, fit training and test data set to our scalar. We are going to instantiate our ridge model. And in this case, we are saying that the alpha method is the regularization, right? So every time this code runs, it's going to pick a new regular regularization strength. And we are going to fit the model like we just did above. And we are going to use the model for our prediction. And then um, we are going to get the accuracy score using the two different methods that I showed you. Of course, the answer is going to be the exact same thing. And then um, we are going to print out the regularization strength and the corresponding scores. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And this is what we get. So for alpha of 4, the regularization, the accuracy score is similar to what we got with an alpha of 10. For alpha of 1000, the regularization, the accuracy score actually decreased. And as you can see here with increasing regularization, the accuracy score um, is decreasing. But what you notice is that between 100,000 and 1 million, the accuracy score kind of stays consistent. There's not much change happening right there. You know, so this is um, a method for you to kind of experiment with different regular regularization strength, um, you know, different alphas and kind of find out what the best regularization strength is going to be. So that's basically it um, for this video, right? But one more thing before I let you go. How do you actually explain this model? So you've um, fit your model, you've gotten your predictions, you've gotten your accuracy scores. But how do you actually explain which features in your data frame is responsible for the score you are getting? Which features are most important? So if we go here and, and what did I call my model? RGC. If we do something like RGC, 
dot coefficient as you can see here we have a lot of coefficient but what does all these numbers mean you know what do they tell us about our model about the futures and stuff well in the next video i am going to show you how to explain a rich classifier model make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get notified of that video and to get access to this notebook that i use in today's video go to machinelearningeducation.com and once you are here you can go to free data science resources or you can go directly to machinelearningeducation.com slash free and this is how you get access to this notebook so i create a lot of youtube videos and a lot of blog posts and i end up with a lot of tutorial python notebooks and i just find this easier and more straightforward to take all my notebooks all my videos all my blogs and put it on the one platform so if you go here at machinelearningeducation.com slash free, you'll be able to get access to my data science tutorial notebooks, including this one that I use in today's video. You can also visit me online at evidencen.com. This is my primary website where I write data science blog posts. And as time goes by, I'm going to add more and more stuff to my data science blog post. And once you are here, you can also click on free data science resources to be able to get to this page right here where you can get access to the notebook. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you made it this far in this video, but you didn't like it, please give it a double thumbs down and still subscribe to the channel. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.